G'day, Sambo here. Um, just showing off some of the fuses and circuit breakers that I use and will be using in my um, off-grid solar power system. And I'll also touch on why they're so important. And we'll also go into a little bit about cable sizing and making sure that you've got the right cabling to use. Um, but first up though, in Australia we've got to have, between the battery bank and the inverter, positive and negative, both have to be fused. So I've got this HRC fuse holder. And that just pulls apart. And we've got the fuses there. This is made for three poles. Obviously I only need two. These are 160 amp fuses. Pull them out, slide along. That's them there. There we go. Nice substantial housing. Spring steel clips up here to keep these, um, I don't know what they're supposed to be called, sockets, that'll do for me. Nice substantial bolts there to carry the current. They just lock in. Now this can be used as an emergency isolator as well. When it's bolted to the wall, it's a lot easier to open. That's that. I have used a smaller version in the past. They're 40 amps as isolators from my between the solar panel and the um, charge controller. I use DC rated circuit breakers. This is a 20 amp circuit breaker. There's a 100 amp circuit breaker there. I know it's overkill. Um, I got it for the right price. And today I'm just going to be using that as a switch when I start mucking around over here. And I'm also going to test out this AC circuit breaker. So that's off at the moment. I've got this tin wire hooked up. I'll get the mobile phone out so I can film this as well from a better angle. See what happens. Thirty one amps. This is basically a direct short. Fifty two amps. Sixty four amps. Look at that smoking. Sixty six amps. I think you get the idea. So there's some thin cable there with a hundred amp fuse. So that fuse is obviously way too much, not correctly sized for that cable and have a look at that now if that was in your house and you didn't know about it 
you just have a flaming mess when you got home. So, let's uh, change things around a bit. Alright, I've got two strands of heavier duty cable there. I've got a 20 amp DC circuit breaker. I've got a 100 amp one again just to act as my switch. Um, multimeter's ready to go. There we go, 51 amps. 53 amps. Sixty-one amps, a twenty-amp circuit breaker, tripped. All right, ready to go again. AC circuit breaker on. Clamp meters ready. Hundred-amp circuit breaker. Let's go again. DC circuit breaker just broke. Another fuse I didn't mention earlier. I've got these Blue C terminal fuses. So they basically they go on your terminal post there. Have the fuse. So this is rated at 60 amps. And then you go from here to your bus bar or, well, I'll be going from each battery bank to a bus bar or you can go straight from there to your inverter. Alright, now I'm going to test out the blue sea fuse and see what difference that makes. So I've got my 35mm square cable Got my clamp meter, got my 100 amp circuit breaker, and some lighter gauge wire going back to the battery. As soon as I hit that switch, it's going to be a dead short. And we'll have some sort of idea of what's going on with that cable. And then I'll put the fuse on and test it again. So I've got my thermometer, 11 degrees Celsius. 53 degrees Fahrenheit Let's do this 37 amps 52 degrees 43 amps 56 degrees I'll go back to Celsius 55 amps, 14 degrees, 70 amps, 16 degrees, 80 amps, 20 degrees, things are starting to heat up. There's my 100 amps. Alright, I've got the setup here. Straight from the battery to my 100 amp circuit breaker. I've got some very light gauge wire there. Back to the battery. So once I hit this switch, it's going to be a direct short. Got the clamp meter set up. Got my thermometer. A little hard to tell, but 12 degrees Celsius. 54 Fahrenheit. Right, let's turn this on and see what happens. Oh, I have a limit straight away. There's nothing left there but a stinking mess. But at least the circuit's broken. Now this fuse is not matched to suit this cable. This is just for demonstration purposes. I've got the other camera 
watching the cable and see if that goes up in a cloud of smoke again. And let's go. See that? That's it, done, bam. As soon as that current exceeded 60 amps, fuse is blown. All right, so what can you take away from this? Make sure that you have the right size cabling. As you can see there, too small the cabling. You can end up with a flaming mess. You let the magic smoke out, things don't work so well. Um, fuses are there to protect the cabling. Not the equipment. Your equipment should have fuses built in anyway to protect it, protect itself. Your fuses are to protect the cabling so that you don't end up with a flaming mess. So, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in another video.